Howdy folks. I've had some requests recently, including from some members of the Secret Information Club, to talk about the recent announcement in the press that some scientists working at the Large Hadron Collider have detected what may be the Higgs boson, or the God particle. You know, what does this mean? What is the Higgs boson? Why is it called the God particle? What significance does it have? Well, basically, the Higgs boson is a kind of subatomic particle that scientists have talked about for a while. Um, it has a kind of funny name, you know, a, a boson. It, it sounds like a guy that works on a ship. But uh, in any event, it is a rather elusive particle. They've been trying to find it for decades now, and it's thought to play a very important role in in physics, which is why it's sometimes called the God particle. Now, a lot of scientists really don't like that nickname, but it was come up with by a Nobel Prize winning scientist. In 1993, he published a book called The God Particle, and he explained the nickname that he gave to the Higgs boson by saying that it is so central to the state of physics today, so crucial to our final understanding of the structure of matter, yet so elusive. Qualities that he would presumably attribute to God. Now, to understand the role that the Higgs boson plays, we need to understand something referred to as the standard model. For a long time, scientists have been trying to study the forces that we see operating in the universe around us. Forces like electricity and magnetism and gravity. Those are three that we can see operating uh, fairly clearly on our everyday level of interaction with the world. As scientists have studied matters, they've discovered another couple of forces that operate on the very, very small level of the subatomic world. These are called the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force. What scientists have wanted to do, though, is find a fundamental explanation for all of these forces. And they've made some progress. Uh, these days, for example, and in fact for quite a while, electricity and magnetism have been recognized as basically two sides of the same thing, and so scientists talk about the electromagnetic force in addition to the strong force and the weak force and gravity. What they'd really like, though, is a fundamental explanation for all of these forces. And to pursue that goal, they've been studying the interactions of subatomic particles, like protons and electrons and neutrons, the kind of particles that make up ordinary matter. In the 1950s and 60s, they started to discover a huge number of particles, way beyond the standard three that you hear about in a typical high school science course. They found so many particles that scientists even started referring to the subatomic particle zoo. And they really wanted to find a way to explain this apparent number of particles uh, based on a smaller, simpler set of particles. And, and they did. They ended up proposing a theory, now known as the Standard Model, which holds that all of the different particles they were observing could be explained by the interactions of a relatively small number of particles. Actually, still dozens, but a lot less than what they were dealing with before. The Standard Model was developed in the 1960s and 70s, and one of the particles that was proposed as part of it was proposed in 1964 by a British gentleman named Peter Higgs, and it's after him that this particle is named, the Higgs boson. It has been very elusive. In fact, it's the last of the particles in the Standard Model to be found. Uh, scientists have been on the hunt for it for quite a while, and it's only been recently that they thought they've gotten solid evidence that it, that it actually exists. It's thought to play a very important role in physics because one of the things that has been most elusive to scientists as they've studied the different forces that we can see operating in the universe is the force of gravity. And in particular, there's been the question, why do objects and the particles that make them up have mass? It's thought that the Higgs explains that. Uh, and so 
discovering the Higgs and being able to figure out its properties and how it works could make a big contribution to understanding the theory of gravity. How would you prove that the Higgs boson exists? How would you find it? That's where the Large Hadron Collider comes in. The Large Hadron Collider is basically a big, huge, expensive piece of scientific equipment that has been built on the border of Switzerland and France. It's what's known as a particle accelerator, and what it does is it takes particles, like protons, and also lead ions, and it accelerates them to a very high fraction of the speed of light. It gets them going round and round on a circular racetrack that's 17 miles around, and then it smashes them into each other. And when they collide, it produces some very interesting effects that scientists watch. Uh, it, you'll typically have, for example, lots of different kinds of particles you know, issuing forth from a collision of beams of protons. And scientists watch the tracks that are made by these particles and they try to figure out what kind of particles they're looking at. And recently, scientists think that they've detected the Higgs boson. Now, they've kind of hedged their bets. In recent press announcements, the two teams of scientists that independently uh, found evidence for a Higgs boson-like particle uh, at the Large Hadron Collider said that they found evidence that was consistent with the existence of the Higgs boson, but they, they haven't actually committed to saying we've definitely found it. They want to wait and, you know, have some more testing and, and be more certain before they make that claim. And that's understandable. It'd be awfully embarrassing if they announced that they'd found the God particle and then it turns out they were wrong. If they have found the Higgs, what does that mean? Does it mean that the standard model is now complete and so we now have the final theory of everything? No, it doesn't. There's a lot of stuff that the standard model doesn't explain and doesn't even cover. Scientists think that in addition to the ordinary visible matter that we're familiar with, there are also a couple of other things. One of them is called dark matter. It's matter that we can't detect through normal means, but we can observe its effects through gravity. And it's thought to explain, for example, the shape and behavior of galaxies. A few years ago, scientists also discovered that the universe not only seems to be expanding, something that has been thought for some time, but that its rate of expansion is accelerating, getting faster and faster. And to explain that acceleration, you'd need some kind of force to drive it. And so scientists refer to this force as dark energy. Dark because we don't know how to detect it otherwise. The standard model only covers ordinary visible matter. It doesn't cover so-called dark matter or dark energy. So there's still a lot of room for physicists to make new discoveries about how matter and energy and the universe work. Let's bring it back to the topic of God. Now, as we've seen, the nickname the God Particle really doesn't have a lot to do with theology. It's just a provocative name that Leon Letterman gave his book. But is there any theological significance to all this? Well, yeah, because if you look at the particles that are predicted by the standard model and that scientists think they have found, they have certain properties and they behave in certain ways. And you have to ask, why? Why do these particles do what they do? Why do they have the properties they do? Well, um, scientists have been talking about ways to explain that. For example, uh, one theory that is popular these days, known as string theory, claims that there are even more fundamental things known as strings that explain the properties of the subatomic particles we see. If string theory is true, that would only raise the question, why do strings behave the way they do? Or if some other theory is true and there's some other explanation on the physical level, we'd still have to ask, well, why is that the way it is? On whatever the fundamental level of the physical universe turns out to be, we'd still have to ask the question, 
Why is it this way? Why is there this stuff? Why does it obey these laws? Why are there these laws? Why is there this stuff? And that question will remain no matter what scientists discover in the future. Even if they were able to probe all the way to the fundamental level of the physical universe, there would still be questions to ask, and those questions would point to something beyond the universe. The answers to those questions would point to God.